What's up everyone? In today's video, we are gonna react to the video The Low Tier Who Ruled Melee in Europe. Uh, but before we get started watching the video, please make sure to give the original creator of the VOD, ShaylorYT, a follow here on YouTube. I'm sure he would appreciate it a lot. I will make sure to link to the video in the pinned comment and also in the description. With that said, let's get started with the video. High level competition in anything is all about fundamentals. Your fundamentals define you, whether that's physical or mental understanding of your competition. This also means that a higher level competitor can beat a lower level one, even with a handicap. Andy Murray could probably beat me left-handed. Lewis Hamilton could probably outrace me in a slower car. This also obviously applies to competitive video games. A major winning Ryu main is going to have a better any character than someone who can't place in the top 64. And for melee, it's the same. Hell, even I could probably beat a lot of you watching this with any character on the roster. No, I don't have any bitches. Why, why do you ask? But this also is just kind of a common thing. Yeah, I mean, I'll say, I'll say that's like a very important in games overall. Like, basically, like, the more fundamental skill can carry you. I mean, of course, the deeper the game is going to be. And in return, uh, you know, a high chance to give the game a, li uh, a long lifespan. And I mean, I think melee is perfect in that regard right there is so many layers to outplay your opponents uh and i mean of course like this is you know leading up to like playing a bad character you can still you know destroy someone else even if your character is way worse uh so yeah i mean i think melee is really good in that regard like just being able to like express yourself well and like there is so many layers that even with a terrible character in comparison uh you can still do damage and with that said, some characters, of course, are quite underrated and not quite as bad as people say, but still. In Smash. When playing against someone worse, the better player will very often move over to a secondary or even just any lower tier character on the roster to handicap themselves and make the games a bit more fun. I take that! I take that! I take that! That counts! That counts as a win! Because winning all the time can get boring. So what happens when that feeling plagues your every day you have become maybe a god of the game and now everyone you grew playing is no match for you so that makes you end up looking for any way to challenge yourself to chase that excitement again but what about the souls that you may crush on the way yeah Let i gotta give the scene of my i gotta give it cred for being ghost kirby best best caller for kirby so gotta give credit where credit is due home continent of Europe and its place in the melee scene. You see, melee has never been as big over here as it is in America. This combined with smaller, interspersed scenes and a more different, laxed view on competing from the wider scene causes the overall level to be a little bit lower than America. Though it does mean we are way more fun. However, this does also mean that the continent produces less top-level talent, especially in the earlier days of melee. But that doesn't mean there was no potential to do so. Players like Armser in the earliest days showed he could hang with the top dogs of America. Uh, maybe I misunderstood there, but I would actually disagree there. I think like way, way back, if anything, the gap was like significantly... Uh, like I think it was more different European players that could keep up. It was just like people didn't travel as much, right? Not only like Americans, top Americans never going to Europe essentially like way, way back. Uh, but even like Europeans didn't go to the US anywhere near as much, right? I mean, I think even if you look at like, you know, pound four, pound five, like in my opinion at least, I felt like it was more good players in Europe that could make it further, at least compared to the end of like my time competing. And I kind of feel like it's probably still the case. I, I don't know. It's probably hard to say because like some of the days I refer to was like before Leffen became good. Uh, and I mean, then some of the players that were older than me, they are not like around either, right? But I, I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, pound four time period, for example, I feel like it was a bigger group that could like place top 17 and stuff, but I don't know. I don't know. And later players like Prof, Ice and Triff would also show their ability to hang with the best in America. All three getting ranked in the top hundred of Wait, players in the world at on? some point in their careers. But then there are the crown jewels of <laughs> Europe. 
both hailing from Sweden. One a part of the notorious five gods of melee, Armada, and the player who broke that same era, the god slayer himself, Leffen. These two were so far above the others, they may as well have been on another planet, only on extremely rare occasions falling down to earth against another European. Now, I know you may forget, but let me remind you, before around 2020, Netplay really wasn't anywhere near as popular as it is nowadays. And back then also wasn't very reliable connection wise to not be laggy. And so a lot of people really didn't like net playing to practice. This also made practice for the top of the top in Europe hard. While there were players other than themselves in other countries who they could practice against. That's quite big. It yeah, I mean, what do you think about it is actually like crazy, like a game like Melee being this old and like getting such good online. I mean, if you compare it to like Nintendo Online on the Switch, it, I mean, it's actually like crazy how bad it is. Like, of course, no excuse. Like Nintendo don't have any valid excuse for having it as bad as they do. But at the same time, the Melee community has always been lucky that there are some people that are like extremely hardworking, trying to like improve the scene. So huge shout outs to all these people, of course wasn't something that would happen all that often, meaning most practice would end up needing to be by themselves, or against players who were just substantially below you. Now, Leffern and Armada took to this crutch differently. While I'm sure both were less than happy to be having to travel 11 plus hours with a stop to get some solid practice, Armada seemed to be more than happy, I guess, to grind out his punish game against bots and play with his brother and not really complain too much about it. But I mean, that might have just been his online character. I mean, who knows how he felt in private. Leffen on the other hand. Right, I'll say how I feel in private. I mean, the thing is like when I hear and see like, you know, sometimes occasionally Leffen making like tweets and stuff about worst practice and stuff. I always felt that as well. But I mean, complaining about it a lot wasn't really going to change much, right? But like in the grand scheme of things, I do agree with Leffen. It's a tremendous disadvantage even now even now with like online being a lot better it's still like a tremendous disadvantage compared to like people that have a more ideal situation in the us so i would say i agree with leffen but it, it felt like one of those type of issues that was like you can't do much about it at least not back when i played like what was i gonna do like oh you move close to me or i move myself right I was very clear that I don't want to move, and I can't expect people to move closer to me, right? So, of course, I did practice against the computers, and then I very consistently tried to invite people over to my place, uh, like local smashers. And generally speaking, of course, it was like players that was going to be far below my level, but it was the best you could do, right? And then when you travel to the States, you often stayed like three, four weeks at a time. Of course, very draining, especially with these super long uh, trips as well. At least from Gothenburg, like you don't have any uh, direct flights to the States. So you always need at least one layover. So I would say normally if you go like to like, let's say East Coast, you normally should count on at least 16 hour trip. But honestly, like 24 hour trip wasn't like too unusual for me if you like counted everything. So, but yeah, just to summarize, like, I do agree with Leffen, but I guess I didn't see any point in complaining. But now with online, and at least it evens out the gap between, like, Europe and the States, I guess the complaining is more justified, because at least you can more easily play against people from different places, right? So, yeah. The hand was very vocal in his displeasure, in the seeming lack of motivation in Europe to get better. And it's been known for a long time now in his vocal outbursts of frustration that his region sucks. He was clearly bored of the competition in Europe from a while back. For example, at Air 2 in 2015, he would enter with his secondaries for a little bit more of a challenge. Characters he'd played a lot in the past, like his Yoshi, but weren't quite up to the level of his Fox. To give you an idea of the extent of his craving for a challenge, this tournament wasn't small. It had a prize pot of roughly 1.7k dollars, and Armada and Lucky had also travelled to enter. But I mean, he clearly just didn't care and wanted to play some Yoshi. And even that would get him to 5th place, just barely losing out to Android. And on his way, taking out the UK's best player and love of my life, Professor Pro. With... Android, Android, Android. Nah, but like, the thing is like, also before that tournament, like, I also announced I was only gonna play secondaries. That was shortly after EVO 2015, and I stayed for 
a month straight. Lothan did the same. Like we traveled to the same tournaments that summer. Uh, CEO 2015, uh, FC, What the Fox, Evo. Like four week it, like four weeks in a row. Uh, just ultra grind. Probably like at least eight hours a day for a month straight. Some days were more like twelve. And then you had flights as well on top of that uh, every week for a month straight. So I think we we're both in just a place where it's like you know. Not gonna take one this one like super try hard. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I ended up playing primarily Sheik, and yeah, Leffen ended up playing Yoshi, Marth, and Kirby, uh, different characters. Uh, but yeah, I also wanted to fill in, fill in on one more thing as well. Like, I, I'm not really sure, but like, I also could see from Leffen's point of view, like, even though we didn't play against each other that often, it was often a meme that, you know, uh, if we traveled to the US and played against each other, it was like, oh, they traveled all the way from Sweden to play against each other. But the thing is, like, most of our practice was in the States, ironically enough. Sometimes I came over, or Leffen came over to my place, uh, for example, and we had boot camps, which we could see earlier in the video. But yeah, most of our practice was in the States. Uh, so, I mean, but even then, like, we sometimes played in Europe and maybe, like, I don't know, uh, now even bigger of a gap, you know? Maybe that discourages him more. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. His Yoshi. And Prof, my I add, also went on to literally beat Hungrybox the month after this. However, it seems that even this level of challenge was too little for him within his home region. And that's when the beast would be created. Half a year after Air 2, this video would appear on Leffen's YouTube. <laughs> this is the first video I remember seeing of Leffen's Mewtwo. It was mesmerizing. As a relatively new player at the time, I had never seen a Mewtwo move and combo like that. I showed it to friends, like, I mean, like, bro, look at Leffen's Mewtwo. This shit's, like, so cool. For those unaware, Mewtwo is, um, ranked pretty low on the tier list. And while he shows some clear potential, he's extremely technical for a character that, while having some pretty strong tools, has fairly diminishing returns. I mean, he dies extremely early and has a hurt box the size of your mum. I remember trying Mewtwo and- <laughs> Okay, that was actually very funny. I also say, like, way, way back in Melee, uh, Mewtwo was actually ranked uh, worst in the game. And I mean, of course, in hindsight, that was silly, right? He was never actually the worst character in the game. Uh, or he never should have been seen as the worst in the game. But that's what people uh, believed, right? And I mean, we have been wrong about a lot of characters, uh, historically. Uh, but yeah. Even with that said, like, Mewtwo obviously isn't a fantastic character. But I think it's like one of those characters, and I'm pretty sure Luffin uh, shares that view still. That Mewtwo is quite a lot better than people give him credit for. That doesn't mean he's amazing. Uh, but yeah, he's hard to play, and if you are, you know, a player of Leffen's caliber, for example, I mean, of course, more justified playing Fox or uh, Marf or Sheik or whatever great character you enjoy. Thinking, god damn, this guy just, just sucks. How on earth did Leffen even make him look good? But that infatuation with that clip has had me play the character throughout the years of my melee career, and honestly, I mean, I, I still think the same way. <laughs> But little did I know, my infatuation would soon turn to despair. The Mewtwo would surface for the first time at Dreamhack Summer, one month later. But he would only use it to get through pools. However, I mean, he clearly thought that he could already win the bracket with his tertiary Mewtwo. His opinion of Europe clearly wasn't very high. And I mean, he did bring it out against Ice on FD for it to get a little smacked up. Only three months later though, at Air 3, he would go mostly all Mewtwo again. However, it would go mainly unnoticed, only getting some wins over some unranked players, mid-ranked players in EU regions, and actually Fuzzy, who after going 2-0 up against the Mewtwo decided to play secondaries for some reason, and lose. I don't know, it can be a weird tournament sometimes, I mean the copious amounts of alcohol fumes can get to you I guess. But in the end, Leffen would place 5th, but without really any insane wins. But the Mewtwo had clearly become a character he could get a challenge with, and already given the lower ranks of Europe something to feel embarrassed about. I mean, even if it was Leffen, losing to Mewtwo wouldn't feel good, and the threat of that low tier was looming ever closer to the upper echelon of Europe.
Yeah, I mean that that is uh, that is a thing. Like a lot of people, we've talked about this recently uh, in a different video as well with Saints Roy. But like people don't want to lose to these characters. People haven't practiced these matchups, and they don't want to lose against characters that are perceived as too bad. It's like a hit to the ego, I guess. He would then go dormant for half a year, irregularly appearing on streams to show Leffen wasn't done with the character, but. That's when it happened. Ooh, that was Phoenix actually Blue, cool. In February of 2018, Leffen would enter the bracket playing a mix of Mewtwo and Marth. This time, he would storm his way through the bracket, making his way up the echelon of Europe. First was Humpei. Then, after his Marth was knocked into losers, came Zork. Then, he was up against Professor Pro, who, in 2018, had such accolades as a win on one of the five gods. Four years as number one in the UK, top 6 in EU and a top 50 on the world ranking. But Leffen would stick to Mewtwo and, well... Okay. Oh la la! Leffen! Prof would play some of the worst melee I've seen from him in game 1. I hate to say it, but he does get it together a bit more in game 2. And still... Game three, Prof is able to get. Yeah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong here. Like, obviously, like, Spacey's both beat uh, Mewtwo, but it's probably very, like, awkward at first if you don't have experience against Mewtwo. Like, truly how far out he can go and reach you before your uppie takes uh, takes off. I mean, of course, Luffin being, you know, an incredible player, uh, Fox main, like, he will, you know, more easily, like, navigate, like, exactly when he can go out, how far he will reach, and so on. Together. But Leffen has the FD counter pick, where Mewtwo's combo game is elevated with solid combos off a grab open up. So far, it's one of the best. It's an amazing tilt. Oh la la! It's not done! Wow, it's not over! They, oh my god! Oh my god! As, you, as, as, as I said earlier, as, as we said, just this is footsie, the gentlemen. It's just footsie at that point. Leffen defeats Professor Pro 3 1. The sadness that this set bought me, you you don't even know, man. And Prof hasn't lived this down. I promise you, losing to a low tier as we know in the modern day of Melee is something that is just not forgotten. Prof would be the only high profile victim at this event, but it was enough. Leffen had proven once again just how far above the EU field he was. It seemed, however, that this had satisfied him. After this 2018 bracket, we would only see the Mewtwo randomly at times where it felt appropriate. And so Leffen would go on to new ways to challenge himself. The Mewtwo seemingly laid to rest. After the release of Slippy and Robot Netcode, we would truly begin to see new talent in Europe rise to higher heights over the course of 2020. We saw players like Frenzy, Solo Battle and Pipsqueak break out. Frenzy and Pipsqueak both collecting great wins abroad, especially so in Pipsqueak, who, I mean, I've even made a whole documentary on. He managed to beat the only two active five gods and win a large tournament in the US. So of course, Leffen would compete against them and for a Sweet. moment probably Sweet. felt Sweet. a little bit refreshed. Sweet. But eventually we would see the new ways he would seek the challenge. He would enter online brackets with Sheik to build up his secondary for Zane's Marth. Sure, the Sheik would win in Europe, but we all know how good that Sheik is now, so I mean, that's not too much of a shock. He would then test himself on the box, and actually, he would take some losses on his new controller. But in the end, he would catch up pretty quickly. None of these challenges seeming to truly last, and Leffen, feeling demotivated with Melee as a whole, wouldn't really play all that much of in Europe, even with the new competition. That was until the release of Slippy's Ranked Mode releasing a wave of hype for players to climb through the new ranks from the comfort of their own home. And of course, as a streamer, Leffen jumped at the opportunity. First of all, he got ranked 1 on his main account. Then, he climbed to the top with his account where he only played box. So what else was there for him to do? Just being on Europe as normal wasn't going to be interesting for him, nor his stream. Thus, the beast started to stir. He hopped onto his account. Mewtwo man and started to run through Europe, taking sets off of all the best new up-and-comers out here grinding ranked, and just taking them all down of his Mewtwo, climbing his way up the ladder with six to eight hour streams every day, his Mewtwo making a mockery of Europe, 
all while effort improves the character to heights the world had never yeah I, I mean it's like it is funny in a way but i mean of course a player of latin's caliber it is how do you say like you always want these type of players to have like as many people that can contest them as possible right i mean it's not really good for the scene when it's someone that can like beat essentially everyone uh with a character like mewtwo uh and no, no, again like i don't think mewtwo is as bad as some people think probably but i mean he's still like not a good character right and you know even sets more even competition it it makes uh it makes for you know more fun spectating experience gets more people in more easily uh so yeah i, I mean i can understand like challenging yourself with like a worse character but at the same time it's like it's going to be hard to push yourself to your best possible version of yourself if you are not tested, right? Uh, but yeah. Ever seen before. Eventually, he reached the top with his other accounts. Mewtwo had beaten down Europe and allowed Leffen to the top of the charts with his moniker. EU is lazy. <laughs> this was actually a cool incentive thing he tried to get people to play more. Leffen does genuinely try to get people out there to play but it might just not be in the blood of the scene. I mean, these searches for a challenge just, they aren't malicious, just a way for him to cure his boredom. And unfortunately for Europe, he wasn't done yet. See, while Mata's retirement years ago, Leffen has been the undisputed god of Sweden for years now. The unquestionable rank zero, as he doesn't really go to any locals, but I mean, everyone knows. But Sweden had been thriving in recent years, the rise of Pipsqueak and players like Sharp and Abbey also showing themselves to be top 100 contenders as well, Europe does honestly seem like it's on an upward trajectory for some top class talent. However, that right now isn't enough for Leffen, whose final act to cure his boredom might be his most cruel. Stockholm recently got a new monthly called Smack. Yeah, I also want to like to chime in a little bit about like the, the, the lazy lazy part. Like I'm not gonna say that I pretend to know like exactly how much everyone is playing, not playing, uh, and so on. Uh, I mean of course it's unfortunate if you can't find good players to play with when the resources to play against people from further away is uh objectively a lot better, right? Uh but I will say uh that also for a lot of people like it is very unfortunate, but very few people can make melee, like a living through melee or esports as a whole, right? So a lot of people, even if they are quite good, they might not or they won't have anywhere near as much time, right? And at that point, it might be hard to like, you know, keep pushing a lot, a lot, a lot when you know that you are essentially never going to be able to like do it full time, right? And I mean, as people get older, more obligations, it's only such a small portion of people that can like, play games for a living. I mean, honestly, it's a massive uh, uh, privilege or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to say that. Fantastic space, nice venue, a stream, and a lot of Sweden's top talent. Dady, Save State, a visiting Okami, Sharp, and Pips Squeak himself, all registered for the second iteration of the monthly. But who is that is also registered. That's right, it's Mewtwo Man. Here to see what it's all about. And after hours of hard grinding on Slippy, just how monstrous had this low tier become? Well, Mewtwo Man tears through great players like Oakmead and Dady 3-0 to make it to winner's finals, where he would have to face Pipsqueak. Europe's rising star, newly ranked in the top 20 of the world, confidently better than Ice was way back then. But then again, so is Mewtwo Man. But I mean, it all looks fine. Pipsqueak takes the first two games, and even though it looked a little close in the second, that was FD. We can allow it. I'm sure he'll just clean up another one, and it'll be all done. Okay, well, as I said, it was FD. Look, I mean, this Yoshi's game is going fine. There is no way Leffen could win this one. Look at this lead Pipsqueak has built up. Wait, stop, why is the, why is the music changing? Wait, no, stop, stop, come, come, come on. Yeah, I actually haven't seen uh, the footage from these ga games before. 
I mean, I know the end result, but yeah, I never actually caught them. But that's also something I will say, like, overall I feel like Leffen has always been a very clutch player, you know? And I mean, of course, in terms of like, you know, overall like awareness, fundamentals, you know, all of that, of course he's like the better player, but like, Leffen yeah, he's always just been very clutch as well. In winners finals. And then, fresh off that loss, Pipsqueak plays sharp and loses, not even allowing him the run back. And even in that matchup, Mewtwo runs through Sharp's Peach. <laughs> Leffen's Mewtwo has once again pinned down the best Europe has to offer. Since this event, we haven't really seen the Mewtwo due to Leffen's seemingly dwindling interest in melee. However, it won't soon be forgotten. The low tier runs that have single handedly improved the public perception of Mewtwo as a character and also tormented and disgraced a region. Honestly, at this point, I'm just convinced that Leffen has a mental control over the region. After having an insane edge from just dogging on us for so long. Because, I mean, it's not like Europe is bad. I mean, Triff's run at Battle of BC should prove that. It's just that Leffen is absolutely cracked out of his mind. I mean, it's not our fault that this guy is the one tormenting us. I mean, please, God, someone send help. This video is an SOS. I think he's outside right now. Please, someone come stop him. Please, please, someone come stop him. Yeah. No, oh, Leffen, absolutely, absolutely crazy at the game. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we all, we all know that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't even think it's like, he has like, the, the mental edge or whatever was mentioned. I think it was more also like he's just a lot better, like overall, a lot better. And as we talked about earlier, Melee gives you everything uh, pretty much in terms of like truly outplaying your opponent. There is so many layers that is like, you just, it's so many layers to like every single part of the game, right? So it's not like, all right, you're not that good at the game, but it's not going to be that big of a difference between a mid-level player and a top player. Like, everything is just, like, such a large scale. Like, when it comes to, like, you know, combos, edge guards, recoveries, everything has, like, 100 levels to it. So, that, that allows worse characters to, like, have a bigger opportunity in terms of winning when the, the skill gap is bigger. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this, you know, react to this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And uh, please let me know in the comments, how good do you rank Mewtwo in the game? What placement do you put him on the tier list? That's going to be it for this reaction video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And as I said at the start of the video, please give the original creator of the VOD a follow here on YouTube, Shailor YT. Uh, pin comment where I include the original VOD and also in the description. With all that said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Take it easy, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.